I thank you for choosing to watch this video. God bless you and protect you. So why is all this happening? It may be a question that you've asked yourself quite a few times over, over the last 15 months. If you have come into the almost incomprehensible truth that what is going on has been planned, has been orchestrated, and there is a um, sinister, evil agenda behind what's going on, then you may, may have then wondered, like, well, how is this possible? How could the world possibly be that evil? Maybe at this moment in time, you're continuing to stay in the place of that this is a um, that this is just something that we need to get through and um, trusting and believing in the official narrative because maybe you feel at this moment in your life that um, the world and the and the powers that be in this world aren't couldn't possibly be that evil to to plan something such as this to plan such an incredibly sickening devastation to human life you may have a, a number of questions right now so in this in this video i'm going to answer um answer the question why is all this happening so you may not know this but the god of this world is satan and i'm just going to read some um a few a few paragraphs from something i'll post up post a link to this in the video but when you realize this, then you then are able to comprehend the, the evil that is taking place. You can understand where this comes from because we are all in a spiritual battle, whether we have faith or not, whether we believe in God or not, whether we feel we're atheist, um, agnostic, we, we're a Christian, we believe in um, any other any other God would believe in Muhammad, whatever it may be, we are all in a spiritual battle. We don't need to be spiritual. We're all in a spiritual battle and it's between good and evil. So the phrase God of this world or God of this age indicates that Satan is the major influence on the ideals, opinions, goals, hopes and views of the majority of people. His influence also encompasses the world's philosophies, education and commerce. The thoughts, ideas, speculations and false religions of the world are under his control and have sprung from his lies and deceptions. Satan is also called the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2.2. 2. He is the ruler of this world in John 12. 31. These titles and many more signify Satan's capabilities. To say, for example, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air is to signify that in some way he rules over the world and the people in it. This is not to say that he rules the world completely. God is still sovereign. But it does mean that God, in his infinite wisdom, has allowed Satan to operate in this world within the boundaries God has set for him. When the Bible says Satan has power over the world, we must remember that God has given him domain over unbelievers only. Believers are no longer under the rule of Satan, Colossians 1.13. Unbelievers, on the other hand, are caught in the snare of the devil, 2 Timothy 2, 26. Lie in the power of the evil one, 1 John 5, 19, and are in bondage to Satan, Ephesians 2, 2. So when the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world, it is not saying that he has ultimate authority. It is conveying the idea that Satan rules over the unbelieving world in a specific way. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, 
the unbeliever follows Satan's agenda. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Satan's scheme includes promoting false philosophies in the world. Philosophies that blind the unbeliever to the truth of the gospel. Satan's philosophies are the fortresses in which people are imprisoned and they must be set free by Christ. An example of one such philosophy is a belief that man can earn God's favour by a certain act or acts. In almost every false religion, meriting God's favour or earning eternal life is a predominant theme. Earning salvation by works, however, is contrary to biblical revelation. Man cannot work to earn God's favour. Eternal life is a free gift. See Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. And that free gift is available through Jesus Christ and him alone. John 3, 16 and 14, 6. You may ask why mankind does not simply receive the free gift of salvation. John 1, 12. The answer is that Satan, the God of this world, has tempted mankind to follow his pride instead. Satan sets the agenda the unbelieving world follows and mankind continues to be deceived. It is no wonder that scripture calls Satan a liar. So I'm now gonna read from 2 Corinthians 4 from the King James Bible. If you've not heard of the Freemasons yet, they are a secret society that is becoming less and less secret. And Freemasonry is a satanic cult. And there are Freemasons at the top of every pillar of society in the current place society is in, in 2021. Freemasons hate Jesus Christ. If Jesus wasn't real, why would the Freemasons hate Jesus? We are living in and experiencing and seeing the devastation of a satanic agenda playing out in front of our very eyes every single day with the complicit mainstream media being central to the propaganda. This was never, ever about a virus. 2 Corinthians 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not about ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. 
always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are, are away delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through this thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I'm just going to finish by sharing um, some more scriptures which you may never have heard in your life before. And I just pray for you now that the Holy Spirit is upon you to allow you to see these words, to read these words, and to believe these words. This is the word of God from the Holy Bible. He is who he says he is. The creator, our father, our Abba father. Our help when we choose to believe in Jesus Christ we comprehend that our help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the way, the truth and the life, the only way to salvation, loves you and loves me and lived a sinless life on earth and died on the cross so that we can all receive him, Jesus Christ, into our life as our Lord and Saviour and have our lives transformed to be set free from our sinful nature and to be set free from the bondage of this world, the evil corruption of this world. To be set free from fearing what is going on in this world. God bless you and protect you. Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a pure heart, O God. Jesus Christ is a you, Jesus. <laughs> the irony. Wi-Fi's come back. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. 
Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Matthew 19, 26. Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. 1 Peter 1, 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. From 1 Chronicles, tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Matthew 21, 22. You can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it. Proverbs 3, 7. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love expels all fear. Isaiah 55, 11. My word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire. James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. There is one creator, God. There is one race, human. There is one blood, red. There is one problem, sin. There is one solution, Jesus Christ. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take this, your stand against the devil's schemes. Isaiah 40, 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Proverbs 21, 2. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Two Corinthians one, verse three to four. Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Sometimes God puts you in places alone because he needs you to realise you do not need anybody but him. I'm now just going to finish by reading Psalm 91. I believe this psalm is going to become increasingly important to more and more and more people around the world. Whether or not you've had an experimental jab 
I pray that you will hear these words and receive these words and experience the love of God in your heart and mind if you haven't yet received Jesus into your life. Psalm 91. Heavenly Father, I lift up, Father, now those listening to these words. May they receive them. May their hearts and minds be open to receive your word. May your Holy Spirit be upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is our refuge, our place of safety. He is our God and we trust him. For he will rescue us from every trap and protect us from deadly disease. He will cover us with his feathers. He will shelter us with his wings. His faithful promises are our armor and protection. We will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. We do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at our side, though 10,000 are dying around us, these evils will not touch us. We open our eyes and see how the wicked are punished. As we make the Lord our refuge, as we make the Most High our shelter, no evil will conquer us, no plague will come near our home. For he will order his angels to protect us wherever we go. They will hold us up with their hands so we won't even hurt our foot on a stone. We will trample on lions and cobras. We will crush fierce lions and serpents under our feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. You are so so precious in our father's eyes he formed you he created you he knitted you together in your mother's womb he has plans for you plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope he has even numbered every hair on your head he knows when you stand up and when you sit down he knows what you're going to say before you've even said it he is the beginning and the end the alpha and omega jesus christ is the author and finisher of your faith and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the way, the truth and the life, the only way to salvation. And if you haven't yet received Jesus into your life as Lord and Saviour, if you don't yet believe in Jesus Christ, know that he is Lord, know that he is alive, know that he died for you on the cross. And by his, the stripes on his back, you are healed. And by the blood of the Lamb, you are cleansed and you are anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is knocking, knocking on your door right now, knocking on your heart for you to open your heart to receive Jesus into your life. The Son of God, the way, the truth and the life and the only way to salvation. God bless you and protect you. May his face shine upon you, Agathe Paul.